Now that Apple has gone into AI, we got one of two pathways to go. One, our phones become basically companions to ourselves and they know all the things that we can forget and read emails and write things for us and it saves us a lot of time. Or two, which is we lose our critical thinking skills and we can't write anymore. What's up nerds? So there's a saying that when Apple does something, they do it right. And they actually take this to heart. The uh, senior VP of engineering, Craig Federighi, actually said in an interview with MKBHD, they were waiting to do the calculator on the iPad because they wanted to do it correctly and they wanted to have standout features on it, which I know is a pretty unconventional take to have, but I feel like they really do take that to heart. And they did it with things like uh, AirDrop and wireless charging with the uh, whole MagSafe thing. I feel like they kind of revolutionized a lot of those spaces. And once Apple did it, it sort of became mainstream to start seeing accessories for uh, wireless charging and things like that. And even though companies like Samsung did it first, it really became popular when iPhones did it because they have the market share. Almost 60% of the US market is using iPhone, so it's pretty crazy. And I'm one of those people, even though I use a PC sometimes. Uh, they really weren't kidding about the calculator app. I mean, they converted it into a whole new thing that even uses AI within it to copy your handwriting and it could calculate formulas for you, which is pretty sick. And they even did this with things like uh, VR with the Vision Pro. I mean, Vision Pro kind of knocked all the other VR headsets out of the water, even though it is like a sort of beta headset. I mean, obviously it's not meant for the average consumer, but I think that it kind of shows that they have a quality that's sort of unmatched with a lot of other tech companies. So what does this mean if Apple steps their foot into AI? Now, I think this is pretty much gonna make AI mainstream now. And I know AI has been mainstream for a long time, but it sort of has peaks and valleys of when people use it and when people forget about it. I mean, obviously like Nvidia stock is up currently and that's like a big thing with them creating AI chipsets and things like that. But I feel like once Apple has done it, now it's gonna be everybody who owns an iPhone. So 60% of the US is basically gonna have easy access to AI. And they did before, ChatGPT has been free. But now you can just talk to Siri, which is something that people already have integrated in their daily lives. And it's gonna be interacting with ChatGPT and it's gonna be making actions on your behalf and sort of reading everything that's on your phone and getting context on you as a person. And it's sort of interesting how the rest of the tech industry sort of follows Apple. So now that Apple jumped into AI, I haven't seen any other companies jump into it, but it was major news. I saw it on tons of news networks and stuff like that, posting about it on YouTube. And I think that now that this has happened, we're gonna see the same sort of shift that we did with magnetic charging. I mean, we, we've seen AI around and we've seen all these companies adopt AI, which it's not like full AI, but I think that now that Apple's getting into it, there's gonna be a surge of new apps that use AI and like all these new things that AI is claiming to do and be able to read. And I'm here to kind of debate whether that's a good thing or not. I mean, like AI has been around for about a year or two now, but now it's part of our daily lives. Like we could talk to Siri, we can interact with it, but even if we're not interacting with Siri, there's an AI on your phone that's back end reading everything. Now, I don't mean to scare you. If you have anything that's below an iPhone 15, not gonna be happening because the AI features aren't coming to any phones that are below iPhone 15. So maybe that's a reason for people not to buy the iPhone 15 and future iPhones if they're kind of worried about this AI backend thing. And I will say when Apple does things, they try to do it very securely, but I am a little worried since ChatGPT, who's not a very secure company, has been involved with it. And Siri's gonna basically ask you, like, do you want me to offload this task to ChatGPT? And I know a lot of people are gonna say yes to that. They don't really know the security of ChatGPT. They're gonna be basically giving all this training data to OpenAI. And OpenAI probably loves this because it's access to 60% of the US, you know? But it's gonna be kind of scary for everybody's personal security. I think it's getting to that point where we're not really even gonna have any idea what is AI written and what's human written because while the Apple AI stuff doesn't actually do any generative text or writing for you, it does paraphrase your things and help do suggestions based off how you write. My concern is at what point is it just like fully AI? Like 90% of the things I'm sending are gonna be like AI rephrased and stuff because first, second time I use it, maybe it gets better and better and at some point, it's like, if I can spend five minutes doing this task, or if I, I can just send it to an AI to finish writing what I was gonna write, then it is kind of me, but it's also not kind of me. This gets into a lot of philosophical debates as to like the ethics of AI and stuff, which is like way too much for this video. But I do think that it will help a lot of people in their daily lives when sometimes we just have emails that are really long and hard to read 
and it's just nice that it'll summarize it for us and then we can kind of tell it what we want the email to say and then it can rephrase it for us and make it a lot easier. And it, I do think that a lot of the features are really cool where if you are reading an email that's a little bit too complex for you to read in the moment, that you can just swipe down and it'll summarize it for you, give you all the key takeaways. I, like, I think that's really useful, but I think there gets to a point where it might be a little bit too scary. I mean, your phone is basically becoming a companion device to you instead of something that you interact with. Like it, like it becomes an extension of yourself. And it's a, sort of like the Black Mirror cookie thing things where it's like a digital clone of themselves is like creating all the actions for them and I think that part is a little scary and I think it does come at kind of a loss where we're not going to be like critically thinking anymore I mean people used to do like uh, write letters to people and things like that and now I mean just simple reading tasks are going to become hard if people become too reliant on this technology and that part is a little bit scary now I had a video last week about the death of ownership I think we're getting to the death of critical thinking which is kind of crazy that AI is going to be able to just be an extension of ourselves and I feel like if we become too reliant on this technology that we might lose our vocabulary and some of our words and it might affect us in our daily lives. But I digress, we can really only speculate how the future will be and I'm sure it'll be fine. I Sometimes I probably think too much about this like AI stuff but yeah in the end it'll probably be okay but it's kind of crazy to think about how our future is becoming like those movies from the 2000s where like Terminator takes over and stuff like that. It's kind of funny that we have evolved to get to that point in such a short amount of time. And it's crazy that two super big companies like Apple and OpenAI, I, no one really knows like how much was paid to each party but it might be true that no money was uh, exchanged because it's kind of a win-win. I mean, Apple gets a free like AI service that where the tokens cost a lot of money and they essentially built a ChatGPT wrapper into their OS and it's great for OpenAI because they get all this free training data. And I believe that OpenAI actually ran out of training data a few months ago, but now, I mean, they're getting all this free training data from Apple users. But as far as the users go, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of people who are not super familiar with the technology and they're gonna give it like personal information because they probably trust their device. They don't know that's gonna be sent to a cloud and they probably don't know how AI works. And I feel like it could be a security risk. And I hope there's disclaimers and stuff saying like, don't disclose any personal information because it's going to chat GPT. I feel like even though Apple is kind of the industry leader and tech follows it, tech has been getting into this weird AI space where it's like everything, including your fridge is AI when before it was like machine learning. And there's always these buzzwords for like investors that kind of make them invest money. And so more and more startups and companies put that buzzword in. So machine learning was a big thing, but now it's becoming AI. So like your fridge could have AI or we got robot vacuums that have been around since 2014, but now they're using AI, which they always have been using the same thing. They just returned it. Overall, we'll see how this decision kind of changes our futures. And again, like I said, we don't know. I don't know like what's gonna happen. And I'm kind of curious to see how it will evolve over the next 10 years if this AI stuff is kind of a bust. And like, obviously it's really useful and there's a lot of useful things to it, but it might just come to a point where people sort of reject it as a society, but it might also not get to that point where people see things on like Facebook and stuff and it looks believable. People get scammed, people get like AI voice cloned and stuff. And we've already seen that happen. And I feel like it might just keep happening that way, but yeah.